Apple have just announced a whole slew of major accessibility improvements for the iPhone coming later on this year. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at what's gonna be coming soon to your iPhone iPhone apps are typically designed with excellent user interfaces, but in general, they're designed for people with good eyesight and cognitive abilities in mind. If you have any form of visual impairment, apps with small text and small buttons can be a real challenge to use. And if you have a cognitive disability, apps with multiple buttons and menus can be overly complicated. Assistive access is a feature that Apple are releasing, which will distill apps down to their core components and essential features to lighten the cognitive load. In the images that Apple have released, you can see five reimagined apps. Photos becomes a range of large tiles with a back button at the bottom, while camera becomes a large representation of what the camera is seeing with a large obvious take photo button down at the bottom of the screen. Calls very clearly lists the owner's contacts with a clear photo to show who is who, while music shows playlists in clear, easy to press buttons with a play and pause option up at the top. Messages has a much larger send button than it usually would, with emojis showing in the bottom third of the screen in large, easy to recognize pill buttons. What I like about all of them is the uniform language of having the name of the app showing clearly at the top of the screen with really obvious navigation buttons down at the bottom. The feature extends to the home screen as well, with Apple sharing a screenshot of how the feature might look on both the iPhone and iPad, with users able to choose between a large square grid base layout or a rectangular one, and the ability to choose this extends to the trusted supporters of people as well. It looks to me like a much needed tool that will help an enormous number of iPhone and iPad owners use their devices much more easily. And it will be interesting to see if Apple expands this feature out beyond the five apps that they've mentioned thus far, and whether developers will be given the opportunity to convert their apps into this new design language. Without doubt, the most technologically impressive announcement was Apple's second accessibility feature, live speech and personal voice. Live speech allows users on iPhone, iPad, and Mac to type out phrases to be spoken out loud during phone and FaceTime calls, as well as in-person conversations, giving a voice to people who might otherwise struggle. Commonly used phrases can also be saved for quick access, and Apple shows screenshots of a simple looking text box, complete with a phrases button for quick access to those. Personal voice takes this a step further, allowing users who are losing their ability to speak or who are at risk of this happening to them to create their own personal voice within their phone. By speaking 150 phrases to their phone, which Apple claim will take users about 15 minutes, the phone can then create a synthetic voice for them to be used with features like live speech. Apple claim that the voice data is private and secure, and this has the potential to be an absolutely game-changing feature when it launches later in the year, and I'll absolutely put it through its paces here on the channel when the feature is available. By the way, if you're enjoying the content here, why not consider signing up to my newsletter, The Proper Weekly? I include some tech news from the week, a behind the scenes of what's happening here on the channel, as well as a tip for an item in the Apple ecosystem. The newsletter goes out each Friday, it's free to join, and I'll include a sign-up link in the description of this video. Your iPhone already has a magnifier app. If you didn't know this, simply use the spotlight search function of your phone to search for it, or use Siri and ask it to open magnifier. And it uses your phone's camera to help you to view things in your day-to-day -day life with more clarity. An upcoming improvement to accessibility will give the magnifier app the ability to tell you what buttons you're pointing at in real life using your phone's camera. So Apple used the example of a microwave where the front has lots of different text labels. You would simply hold the phone to the microwave and move your finger from button to button and your phone will let you know what you're about to press by speaking the label out to you. Apple used the example of a microwave in their PR literature, but I'd assume that this would work with anything with lots of text labels. So things like remote controls, home security systems, washing machines and dryers, all things that people with visual challenges might typically find difficult. And while these were the main features shown off in Apple's press release, they did mention a number of new accessibility functions that users can expect to enjoy later on this year. Users of made for iPhone hearing aids will soon be able to pair them with their Macs. Voice control will add phonetic suggestions for text editing. So if you're someone who types with their voice and you've struggled with differentiating between words like do, do and do, this could be helpful. If you use switch control, you'll soon be able to turn any switch into a virtual game controller. Text size is gonna be easier to manage across Mac apps like Finder, Messages, Mail, Calendar, and Notes. Users who are sensitive to rapid animations can configure their devices to automatically pause things like GIFs or videos from playing. 
and for voiceover users, Siri is being tweaked to sound more natural, even at higher talking speeds. So there you go, a whole host of accessibility features, I would assume coming in iOS 17. It does make you wonder with things like this and Apple announcing Final Cut Pro and Logic coming to iPad Pro in a matter of days, all via press release, what have they got in store for us at WWDC? Here's hoping that after a pretty slow start to 2023, Apple News is about to get really exciting. What do you think of these accessibility functions? Anything here you plan on using or anything you'd preferred to have seen them add? Drop me a comment and let me know. And as ever, if you found this video useful, do please consider leaving me a like and subscribing to my channel for more content like this in the future. See you on the next video.